This is going to be a quick down and dirty guide to making dialogue for your mod for Fallout 2. These instructions assume you've already followed the basic software install guide I created earlier. But if you haven't already installed the script editor, you can follow this link in the corner or use the link in the description and follow that guide first. Start this whole process by opening the Asphalt script editor. Open the new drop down and select NPC Talk. Any script type will work, but this is the most descriptive and probably the easiest to use for new people starting out with Fallout 2 scripting. The first thing you'll want to do is give your script a name and save it. I'm going to call mine Quinclaw because that's the character I'm making this script for. Then you want to save it. Save as. Ideally, you'll want to save it as something recognizable, uh, though here's something I will show you real quick. If you save the file with more than eight characters as Queenclaw has nine, and you go to the list button, the scripter will tell you the file name needs to be eight characters or under. Now, technically you can get away with up to 11 characters, but unless you're feeling adventurous for debugging purposes, you probably want to stick with eight. So I'm going to change my file name real quick and just take out one of the letters. Now, just like I showed you before, click the list button to add your script to the scripts.h and scripts.lst files. Check the allow box to add the script name to scripts.h, but pay attention because the default name is the file name for the script, not necessarily the name we defined it as. By default, when you add the script name to scripts.h from here, it will convert any lowercase letters to uppercase, and since the script name itself is case sensitive, you'll have to make sure that the name you defined in the script is all uppercase. So it's probably a good precaution to turn caps lock on when you start naming your script. You can also include descriptions for the script, the number of local variables you'll include in it. I'm not going to use any in this dialogue video. I'll show you how they work in a future video. And a script name. Now the script name seems to be used more for internal searching, so you can use something more descriptive. When you're done here, go up here and click the save button. Once it's done here, you want to go back to your shortcuts and open scripts.h and scripts.lst manually to make sure they were added correctly. Next, we delete or comment out the town rep variable line. Next, you go down to the procedure map inner proc and delete or comment out all the stuff with red squiggly lines. We're just making a dialogue script here. I'll cover the fancy stuff later. Then we scroll down to the talk proc procedure and delete the karma and reaction stuff. Then scroll down and delete or comment out ink neutral critter we're just making a dialogue script still click the dialogue button to open the dialogue editor if this is a new script normally it will pop up a warning saying the associated message file for this script could not be found if you want to create a new file of course you do click yes however if it pops up with an error saying directory does not exist fail to open or create associated message file in directory fallout 2 slash data slash text slash english slash dialogue that means you need to create those folders in your modded version of Fallout 2. Now, this is from the newest version of the SFall script editor. The old version had the wrong directories written down. If you haven't done it already, update to the newest version. It has a couple bug fixes that are really nice, just like this one right here. Once you finish creating those folders, click the dialog button again to make sure it works. Line 100 and 101 refer to the lookup pproc, and line 102 refers to the description pproc. So for line 100, add a character description for when the player hasn't met this character. For line 101, add a character description for when the player has already met this character and is talking to them for the second time. For line 102, add a detailed character description. That's it for the descriptive stuff. Typically, line 103 and on are for actual dialogue. For line 103, we'll add the first time greeting for when the player has just met the character. Line 104 is typically the player's first dialogue choice, and line 105 is typically the player's second dialogue choice. And from here, it's up to you how the dialogue will go.
Now there is one annoying thing about the dialogue editor right now. Sometimes you'll have to redirect the save path to the directory it just asked you to make. This happens because the default directory changes when you search for a script to open in the script editor. I'm sure this will be fixed in a future update, just be aware of it for now and double check where you save the dialog files, because the game won't find them unless they're in the correct dialog folder. We can close this and go back to the script and now we scroll down to procedure node 000 at the bottom. Add a couple lines for space. The simplest dialog starts with reply. Open parentheses 103, which is the dialog line we created earlier. And always put a semicolon at the end. And then in option, 104, node 001, comma, 4. The semicolon at the end. Now, reply is one of the simplest dialogue responses, and it simply points to line 103 in the dialogue file we created. In option stands for neutral option and is also one of the simplest dialogue options. It points to line 104, node 001, with an intelligence check of 4. Now, line 104 is obvious right here. Node 001 is the next dialogue node you want to point the player to in the dialogue tree. And the intelligence check of four allows you to differentiate between average and dumb dialogue choices. Not dumb as in bad, but dumb as in low intelligence player characters. Let's make a second one referencing line 105 and then point it to node 002. Now, when we add these two new nodes, we need to go back to the top of the script and add them to the procedure list first. That's why that red squiggly line appeared underneath these lines. So when we add these two new nodes, you type out procedure node 001 begin, just like procedure node 000. Sometimes an unhandled exception error will pop up. This is common for the current released. You can just click continue and type end, and now you'll have a complete node. You'll probably find this bug popping up a few times as you create new procedures. It might be more helpful to actually write this backwards and start with end. Now you just repeat this process for as many different dialogue options as you want. If you want to use other types of options besides the neutral one, right click on in option and select go to declaration. Here in command.h you'll see all the other pertinent dialogue commands, and if you hover the cursor over each one, a description of how to structure each one displays in a pop-up. When you're ready to have the player exit dialog, set the in option node to point to node 999 for a peaceful exit or node 998 for a hostile exit. You should be able to test your dialog by clicking the drop down for the dialog button and selecting preview and testing. However, in this version, it doesn't really seem to be working. It has worked in previous versions though, so I expect this to be fixed in the next update. And it'll probably be fixed before I put out my in-depth video on dialogues. When you're done, save your script and your dialog. Click the compile button, check for errors, warnings and messages are fine, and if there aren't any errors, a little cogwheel will pop up with the words successfully compiled. Now that you have your dialogue and script finished and saved, shrink down the script editor, you might need it again in a minute, and open the mapper. Open up whatever map you're working with, and to add this script to a critter on the map, switch the object type to critters and select the critter you want to add it to. Click the edit button down at the bottom, click the new script button, right here. Look for your script and select it. You can use the letters on your keyboards as shortcuts to the first letter of the script name, page up, page down, and the arrow keys. When you have it selected, click done, then open the menu and save your map. To test it, make sure the player spawn point is right next to the critter you're testing by going to scripts, set start hex, and clicking the spot you want it to, then save the map again. Close the mapper and run the game. War. Start a new game, take the default character, walk over and talk to your newly made NPC. If it crashes with the error G dialog error grabbing text message, go back to the script editor, open the dialog file by clicking the dialog button, then select save as. 
navigate to the text English dialog folder and save it there. Again, it's kind of a weird bug since the dialog editor throws you an error if this folder isn't even here, but then doesn't save the dialog itself here automatically when you fix the error by adding the folders. But I am sure it'll be fixed in a future update since the modder Mr. Stalin is definitely still working on the dialog system. If you found this useful and helpful and you want to get more people interested in making mods for Fallout 2, please share this around and like, comment, and subscribe. The more people we get involved in the Fallout 2 modding community, the better the mods will get. The better the mods get, the more awesome stuff we'll see. In fact, I'm working right now on a video explaining how to create new creatures in Blender and import them into Fallout 2. And I can't wait to see what you guys come up with.